Hey, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. And uh, yeah, you know what this is. You know what this video is uh, going to do. Elliot Smith tier list. You've clicked on it. I will start this off by saying that uh, Elliot Smith is, yes, one of my favorite singer songwriters ever. Uh, he has made some of my favorite records of all time. And, uh, you know, in this tier list, in, in terms of like where you see this in perspective with the music world as a whole, I think even a so-so Elliott Smith record, uh, if you believe there is such a thing, is uh, leagues better than many other singer-songwriter records out there. So, you know, for the sake of kind of creating a, a, a hierarchy here and at least like giving an opinion in terms of which Elliott Smith albums I prefer and which ones I don't, uh, you know, I, I will be legitimately ranking them. I know there are some Elliott Smith fans that uh, believe every album is a tier, every album is S tier, uh, but that wouldn't be a very, uh, you know, fun tier list video, would it? So yes, let's go through the records. Let's uh, give some thoughts. You're free to uh, put out yours in the comments or in a video as well. And uh, yeah, starting off with his uh, debut, 1994's Roman Candle, there it is. I did give some thoughts on this LP in my self-titled classic review, uh, which I will reiterate here. Uh, look, I think this album overall has some decent tracks on it. I think aesthetically and stylistically, it has a lot of the qualities that make any Elliott Smith album unique in terms of his uh, vocal style, his production style, his writing style. Uh, the absolutely heart-wrenching lyrics are there as well when you can catch them. But Roman Candle overall is uh, far from my favorite from Elliott because it does have some shortcomings. Like, there are some songs on here that are quite scant. I don't know if it was just, um, you know, as a result of like the recording process or his artistic process, but uh, there are some tracks that feel quite unfinished here, obviously. Uh, it's not clearly his most like robust uh, crop of tracks. And uh, there are some moments where the production is just a little uh, too rough for comfort as well, even though, you know, Elliot, I think, settled uh, quite well into a more DIY recording style on his next couple of albums. Roman Candle is uh, an album that I think any hardcore Elliot Smith fan should listen to. And again, when you do listen to it, uh, you will catch a lot of those familiar qualities that make any Elliot Smith album special, but is uh, this one his best showing? No, I don't think so. I think it's uh, you know far from that, but still decent. I would put it uh, in in the C tier, very solidly in the C tier. Not bad by any means. Okay, following this, we have his uh, next record, his self titled album in 1995, which, as I just said, I did a, a classic review for this one recently, and uh, I cannot say enough good things about this record. I think this record is amazing. I think the subtle and minimal recording style. Uh, was great and complimented Elliot's writing and vocals, uh, double track in those guitars and those vocals, I think make the uh, sound of this thing really mesmerizing and haunting. And uh, this is my favorite crop of Elliot songs when we're talking just like raw songwriting as well, like the lyricism cuts, the hooks are great. Like Elliot's words and his depictions of just uh, addiction, dependency are just absolutely haunting. A few singer-songwriter records actually haunt me uh, emotionally in the way that this one does. And I, I think it's, you know, pretty much flawless. You know, one of his best, if not his best, and uh, one of the best singer-songwriter records out there, period. Truly special writer. Uh, vocalist and uh, sound to this album. Again, uh, I cannot say enough good things about this record. And if you want to hear me like really spill all of it out, you know, check out the review for uh, for this one. I would put this in the S. I think this thing is S. It's pretty uh, unfuck withable in my opinion. So yes, incredible record. But following this, we have his 1997 album, Either Or. For a lot of people, this is the one. This is the one. And I get why it's the one. You know, Between the Bars is obviously a great track. Um, I'm very smitten myself with pictures of me. I think the, you know, the, the linear and aggressive build on that track is a great, huge emotional impact on that one. You know, that kind of impact you don't hear on the self-titled, and it uh, goes over very well on this record. But for me, this one isn't the one. It's not the one. It's one of the ones, but it's not the one. One Like, does this one haunt me in the way the self-titled one does? No, not necessarily. And while I do respect 
uh, Elliot's instrumental ambitions on this record, I don't think they were really fully realized here in the way that they were on later albums. There are some spots where I think um, vocally he is not really popping or standing out in the way that he could or should. And I don't know if that's as a result of like, you know, balance in the mix or just uh, generally not... Um, you know, singing with the intensity that he did on the previous record. I, I see this record as successful as this album was with obviously like the Goodwill Hunting tie-in and everything. Culturally, this was an essential moment for Elliot and the introduction to Elliot Smith for most people. You know, that you just have to give the record like, you know, respect and room for simply that. But did the entry point here occur during his like highest point of, I think, like performance and creativity. No, not in my opinion. I think it did take him a minute, obviously, you know, post this record getting a bigger deal and a bigger budget. Uh, it did take him a minute to really land on his feet in terms of like, what kind of instrumentals, what kind of instrumentation do I want backing my songs. And I think some of his attempts at nailing that here do come off a bit bland or at least not as interesting or as flavorful as uh, some of the simpler ideas and motifs on the self-titled. Uh, again, that being said, like the songwriting uh, track for track is still very good. Uh, but is it my favorite Elliott Smith album? No, not necessarily. There are uh, others, including the self-titled, uh, that I far prefer. I would put this in the B. So next, one more year down the road, we have uh, Elliott Smith's 1998 album, XO. This comes after his uh, uh, larger record deal with DreamWorks Records and uh, very obviously like a, a bigger budget going into this album as well. So you do get like fuller uh, rock instrumentals on this thing, sometimes like some piano. It's just a grander uh, presentation instrumentally. And, uh, you know, for the most part, I think Elliot nails it on this album. It's a beautiful record. Is it instrumentally as like heart wrenching as his two previous? Is it as dreary as his two previous? Uh, no, but I think he uh, does really well over these fuller, uh, somewhat louder and brighter instrumentals and just uh, pairs them with a series of beautiful songs. Baby Britain sees him embracing an over rock direction once again. And, and obviously that's one of his greatest tracks as well. Are there moments on this one, like with either or, where I feel like he is struggling a little bit to ride on top of these instrumentals with his very understated vocal style? Yes, but uh, the production on this one is still a cut above of the previous record. I think a lot of these tracks pop harder as a result of that. And yeah, overall XO, I would put uh, very firmly in the A column. All right, following this, we have the 2000 album, Figure Eight. Uh, this is Elliot's other record that, in my opinion, is a totally unfuck withable. This album is amazing. This album is incredible. I think Elliot went further down, you know, this uh, rabbit hole of, hey, we have to give bigger instrumental presentations. It's got to be more Baroque, uh, but found ways to make the instrumentals, I think, a bit more unique, a bit more specific to him. Uh, that's kind of one of the issues I do have with EXO as well. Like some of those, uh, uh, production choices do feel, I think, a little bland, but on figure eight, uh, God, the pianos and the arranged instrumentation are just great. Just great track for track for track. And not only that, but like you see kind of a bigger return on this one, in my opinion, of some of the more stripped back ballads, uh, some of which are, in my opinion, uh, just as haunting as many of the songs off of uh, self-titled. On top of that, like some of my favorite Elliot songs of all time are on this record, Son of Sam, holy shit. What a mind-blowing intro. Also, the heart-wrenching everything means nothing to me. I think some of his most just dejected and um, <laughs> tear-inducing and depressive lyrics uh, land on that song. Yeah, again, I mean, in my opinion, this record is just like the record in terms of instrumental intensity and presentation, uh, songwriting power, and uh, I think Elliot, in terms of uh, the vocal to instrumental balance, like really nailed it on this one. Like for as loud and as bold as a lot of the instrumentals are on this record, uh, there, there's never really a moment where his voice isn't just like, you know, laser focused and just like popping in the mix and sounding great, uh, even with it continuing to be as subtle as it is. Can't say enough great things about this one as well. If I did have to do an Elliott Smith classic review, which obviously I did, uh, if I didn't do the self-titled, it would have been 
this one, you know, like if, if there's any other Elliott Smith album I could rave endlessly about, it is, it is this one. I'd put this one in the S column too. Shit. I said column. I mean to say row. So, uh, yes, I would put, uh, figure eight in the S. I, I love the shit out of figure eight. Okay. So here we have the tier list of the core Elliott Smith albums that dropped while he was still alive, but his discography continues. Obviously he passed in 2003, uh, but in 2004, we got the release of From a Basement on the Hill, the album he was still working on and still creating at the time that he passed. It was released posthumously, and there was still some work on the record to be done before it actually got released. Now, From a Basement on the Hill, I'm, I'm not really all that into. I think maybe this record suffered as a result of not really being complete, or maybe some of the decisions uh, made in the aftermath of Elliot's passing. I'm really not sure. I do think there is some good songwriting on this record, but the production choices like really throw me for a loop, as I think a lot of the instrumentals on this thing mostly distilled down to very boilerplate indie rock. And that kind of ranges from uh, being somewhat bland, like in the case of Pretty Ugly Before, which is a track I'm only into for the songwriting, not because of so much how it sounds. And then there are others that are just so sloppy and just so full of discord in terms of performance. They're kind of tough to listen to or just generally unappealing or not really all that flattering to the song Elliot is performing. The opening track is certainly a prime offender there, uh, strung out again as well. Now, you could obviously like analyze this album through a lens that says, uh, you know, maybe the record and the recording and everything that it was, was just reflective of the terrible time that Elliot was obviously going through at this point in his life. And that much is, uh, uh, true, very true. Like, obviously, the impact of that is here on these recordings. That is uh, very apparent. But did it manifest in a way that made the songs better, made the recordings better, made the instrumentals better? No, not necessarily. For sure, there's highlights on this record. There are good tracks, but I think Elliot has put out far better works in the past. And I, I, I think the time that he was going through and just the fact that uh, it's a posthumous record and had to be released under certain conditions, I think impacted like the overall quality of the release. And uh, I, I think it's worth listening to if you're an Elliot Smith fan, obviously. I mean, you know, it's, it's a must listen, frankly. So while by no means do I think this thing is an awful album or anything like that, I'd, I'd put it in the C. So in the spirit of trying to cover the major stuff here, I also do want to bring up the archival release, New Moon, that came a few years after uh, from a basement. Now, given what I just said about not being super crazy about basement, uh, what else would there be to gain from listening to uh, another set of songs on a double disc where we are essentially hearing Elliot in the raw? Uh, well, at least my answer here is uh, a, a lot, actually, quite a bit, because the two discs of material on this archival release are very good. Much of it is stuff that hardcore fans should already be familiar with, uh, be it uh, versions of other songs or like, you know, stuff that goes all the way back to the Heat Miser days. In fact, much of the recordings on this thing uh, pretty much call back to the self-titled and XO days. And in Elliot's catalog, those are some good days. So hearing more of Elliot's writing during the that era in a very raw and very stripped back state is frankly great. A few of my favorite Elliot songs of all time are on this thing, like whatever folk song and see, awesome. I do genuinely think this is one of the better archival releases out there, period. And sure, it's a lot of material and not every single song is fire, but it's a good mix of moments that are, you know, interesting to people who just want to hear uh, Elliot in this state and in moments that are genuinely entertaining, like some of his best work just, you know, presented it, it with a very simple recording style. And with that, I think I will leave it here. This is pretty much my Elliot Smith tier list. Again, if you feel so inclined, leave yours in the comments. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Elliot Smith, tier list uh, forever.